Alright, so, um... Ow! Ooh! That was not a good way to start this video. Ooh. I'm sorry. Ow. I hit my knee. on oh, my drawer. Ah. Uh, Alright, so... I have a lot to talk about. Uh, I haven't made an update video since... before I left... To, up to Oregon. Um, I guess, I guess I will, uh, go over the events that have taken place in my life in regards to real life and not so real life aka in game I guess I'll go over these things uh, in 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 in, uh, in order from time that they happened and give me a break if I'm kinda off cause it is 5.28 a.m. right now and uh all right, so I I I I went on my trip, and uh, well, before I went on my trip, uh, I had to say goodbye to my stepfather, um, uh, Darren. You guys have all heard about him in my life videos, uh, but apparently, and I thought this was fucking awesome. He can't, he just, he just can't be in the United States. He just can't do it. So he's living in Mexico now. And he's working, <laughs> I shit you not, he is working construction in Mexico for $20 an hour, for $20 a day. A day. $20 a day. <laughs> in hot ass Mexico. Oh, that is just, oh, that is so good to me. Um, but, Oh, oh, the reason that he can't be here is because, um, he has, he has, like, 12 children, I think. Just, just kids everywhere, and he didn't pay his child support, and he owed, like, $10,000 in child support, and my mom wouldn't give him that money. She just wouldn't do it, and, uh, the deal was, it was, like, he would, he had, like, two months to pay the child support, or he'd get sent to jail for 30 days, and all the money he would make between the jail time he it, it it went away unless he made the ten unless he made the ten grand, so he just kept getting fucked. He would just he would save a bunch of money. He'd get like <laughs> he'd get like five grand and then just get sent right back for another thirty days, <laughs> and then right back to square one. And I thought that was great. And uh, <laughs> so he he just can't be in in America. He just can't do it. <laughs> um, yeah. So so I had to say goodbye to him, and that was whatever. That was a good riddance. So fuck. Ugh. With him being gone, it feels like there's such like a dark cloud lifted off of my life. Anyway, I went to I went to Talent, Oregon. Well, I flew to I flew to Portland and I stayed with my grandparents for a while, for a day or two, and then uh, I drove down with Owen and his parents down to Southern Oregon in uh, Talent, and that's where I'm from. That's my home, is Talent, Oregon. Well, I'm from Texas, but I grew up in in Talent, and uh. I hadn't been there in like three or four years, and it was really, it it was very, it was very, very uh, bittersweet. Um, you know, when you're away from a place that's so meaningful to you for for such a long period of time, and you're so far away, I guess I guess you start to, and and, and a lot of, and when you're away, a lot of stuff happens that didn't happen while you were there, a lot of bad things, so you start to, you start to envision this place as sort of like a haven, this sort of like a place where, where everything's okay. And I, and I went there, and it was like, and it was sad, because it's like me, I have, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm going somewhere, it's like every day I feel like I'm progressing. I, 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 I feel down about myself when I don't feel like I'm a better person than I was the day before, and I don't mean just you know, morally, I mean, just a better person in, in regards to everything I do. Um, I, just, I always want to be improving and progressing and going somewhere. Um, again, in, in everything I do. And I went, I went, I went back to talent and it was like, most of my friends from then, well, most of my friends had uh, either moved or, stu or something like that, but the ones that were there, the people that I remembered, even if they weren't really my friends, just people that I knew, um, it was really sad. Nobody was really going anywhere. I mean, it was really... It, it, I mean, and it was like the exact same place. Like, nothing has changed. It's like you would think in almost half a decade... You would think that almost in, that in almost half a decade that things would change. That, you know, all this changed is like... A couple... Like, sidewalks have been fixed or some shit. 
and uh, yeah, like I said, it was like a you know the you know people aren't going anywhere. It's like people who even had really good potential to be something. They're, all they do is just sort of just hang around. I mean, nobody really has any hobbies. Nobody has any really pursuit. Nobody has any motivation to do anything. It's, it's sad. It's really sad. And uh, that, that really, that really, I wouldn't say it bothered me. It, it just kind of stuck in my head for a while. And, it's st and I still do think about it. And... I don't know, it kind of makes me feel grateful that I have motivation and I have a spark in me to go somewhere. Um, but while I was there I saw Carly and that was that was surprisingly easy for me emotionally. It, it was hard at first because I, I had I had I told myself that I wasn't going to do it but like as soon like my first week there I, I I wrote her a message on MySpace that I said, "Hey, I'm in town. If you want to meet up or something like that," and she and she, and she messaged me back, which I didn't even expect because she rarely messages me back. But she said, uh, "She said, yeah, I'm at Tarks, and Tarks is like the is the it's the main like grocery store. It's a small town. It's a very small, humble, peaceful, quiet town in the middle of a valley, and." Uh, Tarks is like the grocery store then, that's where everybody hangs out, it's like right across the street from the skate park and all that. And she said, yeah, meet me there. And and I and I was getting all dressed and stuff, and Owen comes in, I think he was in the kitchen or something like that, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm going to make a mistake, because that's how I felt, but it was like something couldn't, I knew that if I didn't go see her, then, well, I was. it was sort of like, I was kind of like battling with myself, it was like, if I didn't see her, then I was afraid I would regret doing it, but and then, I, then I was afraid that if I did see her, then all of the feelings I had for her would be would be re, would, would would come back, and uh, I I feel I felt more sorrow than anything, and it's because we met up and everything, and it was just she wasn't the person that I grew up with. She's not. She wasn't my childhood best friend. She wasn't. You know, she wasn't the girl that, that that I would, you know, walk home with every day, and we'd fucking just sit there and talk about bullshit all day and all night. And, and it wasn't like that. She's not that person, and it's really sad. It's really sad because it's like, you go through relationships and stuff. Well, for me, I, I went through all these relationships, and I always felt that in the back of my mind there was this one girl who, no matter what, I could always at least mentally fall back on and say, this person's here no matter what. They may be really far away but they still exist and I had to let go of that but I feel like it was for the better I mean it was and yeah you know we're still friends we text each other every once in a while but it's like I don't have feelings for her I don't have any of that and it's sort of like a gift and a curse because uh, I, I like I said I, I relied on that on, on that thought that she was there in, in, in that way but it's just not like that for me anymore and it's sad because that person doesn't exist and I and I guess I kind of knew it that people change like that, especially her. And everybody had told me that she had changed and stuff, and I just didn't want to accept it. But all in all, I'm happy that I made the decision to see her and meet up with her and, and catch up a little bit. And uh, yeah, she's you know she does you know all she does is drink and fucking she she doesn't go to school. She just she just drinks a lot and smokes weed and just. Hangs out with her boyfriend. That's it. That's all she does. That's that's her life. And it's sad because she she used to be a really bright person. Whatever. So uh, I stayed there for a month, and then I flew back. And actually, on my second flight over here, I thought I was gonna die. And I don't know what it is, but. I, I always felt that like if I died on an airplane, I wouldn't be that like I wouldn't be like that scared or sad or anything. I, do, I think it, I, I always thought it would be sort of like a pleasant thing. But when you're actually in an airplane, okay, it was it was night and and I couldn't see out the window because my flight was I, I was supposed to leave at like at like two and arrive in Houston at like twelve. It was two flights. It, it was it was um, Portland to Denver. Denver to Houston. Oh, actually, because I had to take a bus from Talent back up to Portland for my flight, and that was fucking scary. 
Okay, the, the guy who I was seated next to, oh my god, oh, he had a, just, 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 just to give you some, just to give you some perspective, he had a tattoo on the back of his neck that said creep. Okay, I sat next to this motherfucker for like eight, it was an eight hour bus ride. <sighs> like I seriously, like I, like I, like I was super tired so I wanted to sleep but I couldn't. Like I was just, oh, just no, I was not going to do it. Um... But, I mean, he was big, and he smelt like shit. He smelt like shit. I mean, he, he didn't look like a bum or anything. He looked just like a... He looked like what was on the back of his neck. I mean, he, just, he was weird, but, like, he looked... He, he was, like, young. He was, like, 20, 25-ish. But he was fucking built and everything. He had, like... He had, like... Okay, he had very distinctive armpit hair. Like, his armpit hair was, like... It had, like, its own personality. I can't really describe it. But, I mean, it was awful. And he, and he just had a scent... He just had a, he, just a whiff. I could just whiff. <laughs> I could just whiff and just know, oh, that's him. That's him. And I can smell it right now and his fucking face would <laughs> pop into my head. And that was really scary. And I didn't, I just wanted to get off that. It was very uncomfortable. But my first flight from Portland to Denver was alright. And then Denver to Houston. Okay, keep in mind... And I was flying on Continental. Uh, I don't know why I told you that that had nothing to do with anything. But keep in mind that that I I, I like I said I I thought that that if if you die that if I were gonna, if I were to die in a plane crash I always thought that it would be sort of a pleasant thing. I don't know why I thought that. But my mind changed my mind changed about that in about 1.5 seconds. <laughs> okay, maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, but. We were just flying along and stuff, and I noticed that that on the because I couldn't you can't really see past the wing, okay? It's fucking dark, and I mean dark. And I was seated next to this old lady, and I think like her her son or something like that. There was just some like forty year old guy and then some old lady and then me at the window. And I'm sitting there looking out the window, and I noticed that there's ice forming on the window, ice, okay. <laughs> fucking ice and it's not hot outside like I'm looking on my phone and uh, and you, you know you're not supposed to have your phone on but fuck it whatever I'm gonna have my phone on and I'm sitting there looking at it and the weather says that it's, it's like it's like fucking 70 degrees but there's fucking ice okay and it was, obviously it was because of the altitude but we're going and out of nowhere we heart we start hitting some turbulence and like the plane starts shaking and my heart started beating a little bit fast but I was like all right and then it started shaking a little bit more and then I saw the, uh, and then you hear a little beep, and then the, and then the little seatbelt icon thing on the on the ceiling like started flashing on. Like it didn't just turn on; it was flashing. And uh, and and the and the stewardess was like, oh, she said something. She said something along the lines of, oh, the pilot has requested. The, oh, we're hitting some unexpected turbulence. The pilot has requested that we're going to. The pilot has requested that you need to put your seatbelts on and bullshit and whatever. And I was fucking losing it. Okay, I thought that I was going to die. And there was n there's nothing you could do about it. You are strapped into a fucking seat. If you die, you die. That, like, if you go down, that's it. There's no, there's no saving that. There's no, like, jump to the side and avoid it. <laughs> You're, <laughs> you are dead. And, uh... But but the fucked up part was I was the only one freaking out. Like the lady beside me was just sitting there reading her book, and the fucking guy in front of me was sitting there listening to his music, and blah, 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 blah. they just put their seatbelts on and continue on about their thing. And I'm sitting here, my eyes wide open, just like I I I'm getting ready to call people to actually no no I texted I texted um uh, who did I text I think I texted my friend Brandon or something like that, and I th I said like goodbye. Like, like I said, like I think this plane may crash. I, I, I can't. My, I can't. If I could find my phone, I'll see who it is. I, I can't remember. I texted somebody, and I was like, goodbye. And like, I honestly thought that I was gonna die. But nobody else gave a shit. Nobody else was like, they just put their seatbelts on and let's continue on with the plane ride. I'm sitting here fucking like <laughs> freaking out. Um. What else? Okay, so my plane gets here. Uh, I got to drive my car again, which was nice. Got to get back into my car and drive home. It's my baby.